fellow volunteers. My name is Joe Airfest. Isn't it ironic that they've actually named the air show after me, Airfest? <laughs> well, I mean, after all, I am their oldest volunteer. Well, uh, not their oldest. I mean, their longest tenured. Uh, not tenured, uh, tenured. Anyway, I'm gonna be taking you through the information in the volunteer packet to make sure that you have everything you need to survive as an Airfest volunteer. Let me show you what I'm bringing for my ships. Let's see, I guess the most important things are my lanyard and credentials, uh, my t-shirt, and my parking pass. Now these items will let me park free, uh, check in at the volunteer tent to get my lunch ticket. I don't miss many meals. And my shirt will identify me as someone who knows what's going on. Another important thing to know is right here on this sheet, so make sure you write it down who your supervisor is and how you get in touch. My librarian friend always says, you don't need to know everything. You just need to know where to find the answers. If the people in the red steering committee shirts or RFD staff shirts don't know the answer, we are all in trouble. There is another important number on this sheet. It's the volunteer coordinator. Now, if for any reason you cannot make it to your assignment, call this number to report in as soon as you can. You should check the radio, TV, or Airfest portal website for the weather forecast for the day that you volunteer. The volunteer portal will probably have the most up-to-date information, and that way you will know what you want to wear. If you want to wear shorts or long pants, bring a sweatshirt or jacket, etc. No matter what, wear your most comfortable walking, standing shoes. It says here that flip-flops are not considered shoes at Airfest. Now for what else to bring. I've laid out some things that are on my list. A jacket and a pair of gloves. Mornings may be cool on the ramp. I can always leave them in the car. A rain poncho, just in case. Yeah, you never know about summer weather in Illinois. Sunglasses. Now make sure you don't leave them in the car. Earplugs. Some of those planes are really, really loud. <laughs> I love that. Hat. Yep, I trust the old hat. Maybe it's time to buy a new one. A good reason to visit the vendors at the show. Sunscreen, SPF 15 or 30. I'll be taking 30 since I'll be in the sun all day. And heck, I can even burn if it's cloudy. Lip balm, boy, you sure don't want sunburned lips. Well, you can't eat all that good food or give a smooch to your significant other. Hand sanitizer. Yep, you're gonna be needing that, especially around lunchtime. Now, how am I gonna carry all of this in my ID, money, cell phone, and my camera? With no wife around with that handy purse this time, guys, and no place to keep purses, ladies. Well, that must be why my wife laid out this fanny pack. It all fits. But if I wear my cargo shorts, I could put them all in there. I just have to remember to wear my belt. I don't wanna be pulling up my pants all day. Comfort is the main point to surviving Airfest. Let's see, my first day as a volunteer, I will work the early shift. It takes about 15 minutes for me to get to the airport on a normal day, so I better leave about an hour earlier just to make sure that I can park, check in, and get to my post on time. And my second day is an afternoon shift, so I'll have to leave even earlier because the traffic will be worse and I'll probably have to park farther away. Maybe I'll go in early and view the statics and see part of the show before my shift. Well, I'm not working and parking uh, Pyro or the RV park, so the volunteer tent will be my first stop. And those other volunteers will be told in training where to meet and how food and water will be given to them. The volunteer entrance is north of the main entrance, so it shouldn't be hard to find. Once there, the barcode on the back of your badge will be swiped. <laughs> High-tech stuff. And you'll be given a lunch ticket. <sighs> Love the lunch ticket. <laughs> and uh, introduced to someone from your committee. Cool. At least I'll know who to look for if I have questions or need help. 
Your committee supervisor will tell you about breaks, lunch, and where and how to get water. I also want to know where the porta potties are for the volunteers. They'll be right back. Phew! That was close. Oh, all right, let's uh, check out the other information in the volunteer packet. Static planes are refueled upon arrival to expedite departures, and especially in the event of an emergency or bad weather. Fuel will expand in hot weather, and planes leak oil and fuel, especially the older ones. <laughs> Just like my car. Jet fuel A will vaporize and form an ignitable mixture in the air. Because of this highly flammable situation, smoking is not permitted on the show grounds. So if you see anyone smoking, please tell them to stop immediately and direct them to the smoking area at the northwest end of the ramp. Well, I guess it's important that I look at the ramp layout map when I check in at the volunteer tent. Well, I'm sure I won't be one of the volunteers that has the luxury of having a golf cart for my shift, but I may get to ride in one. Or, when I do my shift as a volunteer floater, I might even be driving one. So I better know the rules. Number one, you must be 18 years old and have a valid driver's license to operate a golf cart. No problem there. Pick up your golf cart at the back of the volunteer tent and return it to the same place. And remove everything from the cart, including personal belongings and especially any garbage. I wouldn't want to be cleaning up after everyone either. Drive responsibly. No speeding. Follow cart lane rules and guard directions. Never drive under the wing of a plane. No drinking of alcohol when driving or riding in a cart. But an ice cold beer always goes with a round of golf. I know, I know, it's not golf. In fact, consuming alcohol is not permitted at any time during your shift. Never take a cart outside of the perimeter of the showgrounds. Doing so may cause a perimeter breach and observe all ground stops. Now those all make sense, but what did ground stop mean again? Oh yeah, it's right here in my handy dandy information sheet. Uh, when a ground stop is called, all traffic must come to a halt. Stops will automatically be called when jumpers are in the air and during the main acts, and can be called if the show perimeter is breached. Now those guys hardly ever miss, but with my luck, I would have a jumper landing on my cart. This list is handy. Only performers and trained personnel are allowed to be outside the perimeter of the showgrounds. Should you see anyone breach the perimeter of the show, report it to your supervisor or Metro Enforcement. Do not cross the perimeter line to chase after the offender. All aircraft and traffic movement will come to a complete stop until the perimeter of the show is secure. Another reason to check that map before I leave the volunteer tent, just to get my bearings. Sorry, I was just picking up some FOD. Everything has an acronym here. FOD, or foreign object debris, is anything that isn't permanently attached to the ramp. I guess that means everything except the light poles. It is everyone's responsibility to pick up any loose material, such as garbage, rocks, bottle caps, and money, and place it in a proper container. Now, I can see that a quarter cent flying by a blast from a jet engine could really do some damage and the proper container for that quarter would be in my pocket. No backpacks or coolers will be allowed into the show grounds with the exception of units holding baby or medical supplies. If you find unattended personal items such as bags, boxes, or backpacks, do not move them. 
notify your supervisor or Metro Enforcement, and follow any instructions given. The Chicago Rockford International Airport will continue normal operations during the Air Fest, and there may be times that static aircraft has to be moved through the crowd. You may be asked to help secure the area and walk the plane to the taxiway. No one is allowed within 300 feet of moving aircraft. Be aware of anyone that is not looking at the moving aircraft, especially children that may run towards any movement. There have been some crazy weather situations at previous shows. Mother Nature could be a real joker some days. <sighs> well, there may be times when evacuations of the grounds is necessary. To ensure that there's not a general panic, remain calm. Follow instructions of staff, steering committee people, and Metro Enforcement. They have the plan. Give clear directions to spectators. Provide help to those that need it when possible. Ensure spectators follow all Greater Rockford Airport Authority directions. Now hopefully we will never experience an accident. But if there is one, please remember, do not run to the accident. Do not make decisions on your own. Follow instructions made by the staff, steering committee people, and Metro Enforcement. And remain calm while directing spectators to a safe area. It is normal to be drawn to the horror of an accident. That's why we have so many traffic jams on the other side of the highway when there is an accident. But we must remember that too many people will only be in the way of emergency personnel. And there's always unseen danger in an accident area. Make sure you refer to your volunteer packet to help prepare you for any situation. I hope you enjoy working Airfest as much as I do. Just remember a few common sense things and the day will be filled with great memories that will make you want to come back time and time again. Oh, and uh, just a reminder about that cold beer. Put another shirt on over your Airfest shirt and enjoy a cold one after your shift is done. On behalf of the Chicago Rockford International Airport, I want to thank all of you, our volunteers. Most of all, I hope you have a great time being a volunteer. I'm Joe Airfest. See you at the show.